but it's, it's tough to pimp a girl that you care about. It's tough to be hard on her all the time because you you do want to take care. That's another thing about us. We are providers. We want to take care of our family and take care of the woman we love. But the toughest thing about being with two women as your woman, what's, what is the hardest part of that? The hardest part is finding time for just me. You know? So, so, so wait a minute, though. So what's that mean? Like, you you have to still, even though you're living in this fantasy world that we all love, you live in this world of, of fucking two women and one lives with you, you still have to, like, curl up and watch a movie or... It's work, yeah. right? So, it's work. He's you still gotta, have yeah. to be lovey-dovey. Yeah, you still got to yeah. maintain... Oh, yeah. Shit, man. Because I'm thinking <laughs> the only way to do it is, like, one is lovey-dovey and the yeah. other one is... But see, he's... Uh, he, no, no, he, no, Jerry, how long has this been going on? Uh, ten years. So, t- see what I'm years. saying? He, Holy shit. This is, this is two of his women. He has to be and emotional. And you got room? Wait a minute, nigga. You trying to find another bitch? Yeah, yeah, no wonder you ain't got no time to yourself. Which goes to show he you, does. he loves these two women, and he still needs side pussy. It's, yeah. <laughs> side pussy is, ladies, stop being so defensive about <laughs> side <being> booty. Yeah. <laughs> I personally last, don't mind. Last night, I got side pussy. Yeah. You got last night? Last night. Like, uh, let me ask you, do they know? Yes. Oh I, I sent them downstairs to go watch a movie together, and I said, I'm getting this girl coming over. And we're going upstairs in my bedroom. If I was a square, I'd go, what are you doing? This is what squares are thinking. Jerry, he's probably he's probably abusive and he has a gun on both of them. <laughs> but it's mental. Yeah. He explains it and he lives in it. It's hard to live how you want to live, dude. But once you do, it's beautiful. I don't and think there's nothing wrong baby. with that. Because that's three women. He's still got two more. And again, <clears throat> I say this in my act. Not only do I have five who are naturally born with me, I have homosexuals five, I have dead motherfuckers retarded five, niggas. I have retarded niggas five, I have niggas in jails five, I have married guys who don't cheat five, I have fucking the niggas who's in Iraq now five, and I'm holding them off till they get back. I have uh, fucking... It's like 50 to 1. It's, it's a lot of women <laughs> who are having trouble getting a guy. So, okay, back to the just be good to me shit. What am I going to do? My girl got me. So what about the other ten that are alone? But see, I think that women, for the the nature of who we are, every day you walk outside and there's a new guy that's trying to fuck you. He, they're like, hey, baby, what's up? What you doing? And... And you go, <laughs> no, thank you. You're all day used to rejecting men. So all day long, you rejecting 10 men, which makes you think that there's 10 available motherfuckers out there. It ain't. <laughs> I got a girl. And I'm still going, hey, baby, that's just what you are. When I talk to you in the street, you're just, I just got my human resources department open. <laughs> like, I got my secretary that I need for my company, but... At the same time, I got to always put out applications. Just in case this bitch leaves me without two weeks slip, notice. She might slip and fall. <laughs> she, she might try to sue the company. She, I, I got to replace her just in case she leaves the company. And that's what women don't understand. It's, it's a shortage of men. You don't have a lot of options. That's why a guy like Jerry can live. I, I, Jerry, are you a part of any, like... Um, Cults. A- any not cults, but any um I know what you're saying though. Not a cult, but like a um what do they call it? like a, a group. like a group. Like yeah, are you a part of any 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 sex groups or anybody yeah, that that group. lives like you live? No, I know, my we've talked to some people online, but uh, we're never we're not really a part of a specific. Jerry's group too or busy. <laughs> Take care. <of> his- <laughs> no, but, let me tell you. No, but think about it. he's doing it with like no role model. He's doing it with like nobody to to, to tell him how it was done. How old are you, Jerry? How old are you? I'm forty. All right, forty. Yeah. When you when this is so interesting. At what? Because we all live the same life. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you didn't start off in the tenth grade as like I'm gonna do this. No. At what was the point? What was the like for me? Um. It, it was already always there, but Brazil had this thing where I go, wait a minute, this is this is like the epiphany. This is the epiphany time. So I'm asking you about the epiphany time. When I had an epiphany was when I went to Brazil. I was in my regular because I used to be a serial monogamous, meaning I would just go from woman to woman and make her my girlfriend. I would always have a girlfriend. And what I, what I said to myself, I, I got into the same thing with this last chick. I went to Brazil and I just met the chick, and then I went to Brazil. And I was like, wow, I, I feel great. Like, I even though I'm paying for this pussy, I feel like 
these these women, man, are selling me what I want to buy. You know what I mean? They are selling me what I want to buy. I'm I feel free. I feel like I don't have to be a pimp. Like meaning I don't have to have mind games. And and these women are gorgeous. And I found myself wanting to fuck them less that I would hang out with them and, and was being happy. So basically, when I came back, I said, you know something? I'm never gonna put myself in a position to not be happy ever again. And that was the time where I had that that thing that swept over me where I'm saying, you know what, I'm going to live like this. Now, what what was the moment where you said, I'm going to live like this? Okay. The history lesson is, and, and a lot of guys will, will you know, and you've, got, you've talked about this even tonight, is, uh, you know, getting screwed over or fucked over by a girl. And I got fucked over by two girls. You know, one right after the other, because I was stupid. And I went in there, and I was like, oh, I love you. And, you know, I had a chance to own my own business. And, so, and she said, no, you got to stay home with me, and all this other shit. And then she fucking left me. And I was like, what the fuck was that? I was a nice guy. I was a sweetheart, buying flowers every Valentine's Day. Now, I go buy your own flowers. And <clears throat> let me tell you something. Now, any women who are listening, and any square guys who are listening... You got to understand that you can't look at that like and go, oh, that's what it is. He's a He's jilted injured. guy. No, he felt like that before he got fucking hurt. We feel like that before. Let me tell you something. I used to be a poetry writing nigga or oh, whatever yeah. writing. I used to do a lot of shit to get pussy, dude. Yep. And and it was like I would give them the power of of pussy, I would make pussy like so powerful in my life that I'm like, wait a minute, I'm better than this. I am not gonna like put myself in a position to go. Oh, I love you, movie. I found that being a dick, and let me tell you about this is but go back to the word bitch. Why I say it? It doesn't mean anything to me. It's just a belief system. It's just to say to myself, I can say bitch, and I believe in it. And I'm going to see if I can have you, like, get mad at it, and I stay stand, I stand firm on it. He believes in what he's doing. It took a minute, but he said, you know what? People go, this guy's a lying motherfucker. I'm going to tell you something, dude. No, you not. go, nigga, I'm a, I'm a, and it sounds arrogant, but he, it's a belief system. He believes in it to a point where he's like, the girl's like, he sent two girls down and going to fuck another one. Yeah, shut the fuck up. It happens if you believe it. Trust me. Really? The word bitch to me is not is nothing to me as except for this. It's and just I, go ahead. And I think you talked about it before, Patrice, man, because I was like I was a pussy motherfucker. I, I mean I remember the last time We all are my, my last girlfriend when before I got married and I was crying like a motherfucker. I don't know why she left me, I don't know why she left me. You know, and why? Who? Where? Why? Yeah, how? You know, and and then I just it's something just that was my epiphany. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing, man? Sitting you know? here crying so like now, a bitch, yeah. curled up in the corner you know, in the fetal like, position. Over, then, over what? That's the thing. Over what? What do like you. you really mean? If no. let me ask you a fre question, fellas. If your girl left you, right? What would you really miss about her? What would you really miss about her? What? What's she what her funny jokes? Yeah. Her her what? The the way she talks to you when you don't want to talk to her? You miss the routine. That's what you miss. You miss the routine of what? Just hanging out together, going out, the things that you do together every day. You miss no, that cuz you no. you find yourself no, sitting no. alone. No, you, uh, we don't have a problem. We, 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 <laughs> we, no problem. That's what, that's that's what, what you, you miss. We miss. That's what well, you miss. That. That's what a woman misses. We don't miss your routine. That, that's what I'm saying. There's no. So, let me say. I, so why are you sitting I'm, home sad? You sitting home sad. But that's why? my question. That, okay. You miss All right. Hey, hey, Jerry. When you was crying in the fetal. Yep. What were you cry? I say, and this is my theory, but I'm going to ask you. It's the uh, to me. It's the, it's the arrogance and the ego that you thought the bitch was yours. Right. It's like That's you know what it's what like. It it's like possession. I said. It's, it's like possession. it's possession. I got five well, watches that and four of them I don't wear. Right. But you ever can't take one but of them. But if one, if a nigga steal my watch, I'm going crazy. Right. So it's like you got three bitches and you a piece of shit. Right. Fuck it. 
<laughs> and you lose one of them bitches. And you mad them. at them. Your ego's like, oh, oh you man. feel your ego is damaged. Yeah. That's how I feel when, when if a girl leaves you and you hurt. But let me ask you, Jerry, when you was in the fetal position, how, what, when you look back to about it, what did you miss when you was in tears and in pain? And what did you miss after you, fi when you figured it all out and up to this point, reflecting what did you miss when you reflect on her, and what did you miss at the time when she left you? You understand the question? Oh, no, not really. What, what you did you think? think? Okay, what did you think you missed when you when she first left you and you was hurt? Well, I thought I was in love, and I thought I, you know, missed, you know, hanging out with her and all that shit that the girl was talking about. And and, dude, that's not what I missed. You know, what I, what, I what did you miss when you when you reflect when in retrospect? What did, what were you crying over? Mostly just getting laid, you know. 